The Lord be with you. We're so glad to be able to hear God's word on this first Sunday after the Epiphany, also known as the baptism of our Lord. The baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist in the Jordan River is very important because it's the first thing that Jesus does in order to begin his saving work as the Christ, the Messiah sent by God to show that Jesus is sent by God to do this saving work of saving us all from sin and death, Jesus steps into the waters of, of the Jordan River, submits to the baptism of John, which Mark tells us is for repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. We know Jesus does not need to repent. He has no sins to be forgiven. But he, through those waters, connects himself to us and begins to take our sin and our death upon himself. We're going to hear the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6 explain to us today in our epistle reading what baptism is all about, that we are connected to Christ in everything, in his life, in his death, even his crucifixion. Yes, we are dying to sin as Jesus is being put to death on the cross. But we're also united with Christ in his resurrection, and we will live. The sin is put to death in us, and we are raised from the dead, sinless and perfect and holy. And so baptism for us means that we are connected to Christ. Baptism for Jesus meant that he connected himself to us. That's kind of the main idea that we'll be talking about today. Let's begin now with our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you not know that all of us who are, have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we confess that we are by nature sinful and have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. On account of Jesus, forgive us, renew us, and unite us to your name. The Lord Most High, in his mercy, has given his Son to die and rise for you. In baptism, you were united with Christ, both in his death and his resurrection. You were buried with him, but also raised to walk in newness of life. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. We know that our old self was crucified with Christ in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we had di have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth, Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord is written in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. 
The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join all together in the gradual for the season of Epiphany. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Roman Christians, the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the verse of the day. Alleluia. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he had come up out of the water, Immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. That's what we're going to hear a demon saying to Jesus in two weeks in our gospel reading from later on in this first chapter of Mark's gospel. And although we'll hear Jesus command that demon to be silent, we know that every human being, each one of us born in sin and death, must cry out the same thing to Jesus. What have you to do with us, Holy One of God? We are sinners. After all, what could we sinners who have nothing but death have in common with the Holy One of God, the living God in the flesh and walking around among us? Did God come down to earth to destroy us? Because that's what we deserve. He is holy and we are not. How could we ever have a relationship with the Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Ah, but there's the ironic thing. The demon has said the words, but he has not understood. The sinner in each one of us stands face to face with our holy Lord and God. But we've turned a blind eye and a deaf ear. Jesus stands in front of us as our God in human flesh, and we've heard the good news proclaim that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. God with us? But what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But open your eyes and see, and be opened, O deaf ears. The Holy One of God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. In this human being, just like us, Jesus of Nazareth. But why? What does God have to do with us? What he has to do with us is to bring us to salvation, to bring us to himself. That's what he has to do with us. And the only way for God to have anything to do with us, sinful human beings, is first of all, to become one of us. Not sinful, but a human being, so that he could connect himself to us and us to him. And then he can take upon himself our sin and our death and take them away from us. And in turn, he can give us his holiness, his righteousness, his perfection. You see, he became one of us to make us like him. And his goal is to bring us with him so that we can live together with him forever. With him being like us and we being like him. But how does the Lord connect himself with us? He comes to be baptized by John the Baptist in the water of the Jordan River. He had no sins to wash away in baptism. But there in the water, he meets us and he connects himself to us. And there in the waters of baptism, he came to begin to take our sin and our death upon himself. And so now for us, the waters of baptism wash away our sins because Jesus is there taking them away from us and taking them onto himself. From that moment of his baptism onward, Jesus is beginning his saving work of being the Messiah, the Savior sent by God. He's beginning his work of saving us and taking our sin and death 
onto himself all the way to the cross to die. He's beginning the journey and the process. Now, as soon as Jesus is baptized, what happens? The heavens are torn open. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, oh Lord. And the Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. And the voice of God the Father saying, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Father sent his Son on a mission to save the world. And the Holy Spirit gives Jesus the faith, the strength, the power to accomplish all that he must do. And Jesus, God in human flesh, comes to connect himself to me and to you. Now we've heard the testimony of John the Baptist. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus has come to take our sin and death upon himself and to put them to death on the cross. And when he dies, he pours out the Holy Spirit on all who are connected to him. The Holy Spirit comes upon us and brings to us all the benefits of Jesus' saving work. Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit distributes to us all of Christ's gifts. To us, those gifts are the forgiveness of all of our sins, because they've been put to death with him. And the Holy Spirit's gifts, Christ's gifts, are also eternal life with him forever. He makes us a new creation. He creates in us clean hearts. He renews a right spirit within us. He takes away everything bad and selfish and hurtful from us and gives us every good and perfect gift. And the Holy Spirit reminds us of all that Jesus has taught and done for us and helps us to see those things by faith. In short, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes us like Jesus. And all this happens because Jesus connects himself to you and me through the waters of baptism. And if we're connected with Jesus, we're connected in everything. When Jesus is crucified, we're crucified with him. And the sinner in each one of us is put to death. That's why the Apostle Paul says, you must now consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. When Jesus dies, we all die to sin, and we die the death that our sins deserved. Justice is served. The death penalty is paid. But if we're connected to, with, to Jesus in a death like his, we'll certainly be connected to Jesus in a resurrection like his, coming back to life. In other words, our death is already done. We're raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who brought our Lord and Savior Jesus back from the dead. We're connected to him in everything. And as Jesus promised, I will come back and get you so that where I am, you may be also. Made like him, like him we rise from death and we live forever. Death no longer has mastery over Christ or over you and me. Connected to Christ in baptism, made like Jesus by the Holy Spirit, now our Father in heaven says to us exactly what he said to Jesus at his baptism. You are my son, my daughter. With you I am well pleased. And what about our sins? Well, they've been taken away. They've been put on Christ. They've been put to death. And we put to death along with him. But Jesus has baptized us with the Holy Spirit. And so we have the forgiveness of our sins. We have eternal life. We stand in the presence of our Father God as holy and perfect children made like Jesus. 
connected to Jesus and with him and him with us forever. What does the Holy One of God have to do with us sinful human beings? Everything. He became one of us to connect himself to us and to make us like him. And now where Jesus is, there you will be also, always. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all that we can understand, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join with all Christians everywhere in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we pray as Christ our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>